Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are trudging along the special tools investigation. We're getting towards the end. This is lesson 11. We're going to try and cover the rest of the beam tools, which include the beam extension tool, the secondary beam angle tool, and the beam width tool. We'll see if we can get all three of those into this video. I'm going to scroll over and zoom into this other part of this file where we can demonstrate some of these things. So let's go into the special tools. And the first one we're going to deal with is the beam extension tool, which is this guy here. It looks like uh, two eighth notes beam together and there's an arrow pointing to the right uh, on the beam. And that is the beam extension tool. And uh, it kind of does what you would expect. If you click on a measure that has beams, if you if there are no beams, there would be no handles, um, you'll get two handles on either side of each beam. So there's uh, one handle on the left and right of this beam set. If I go into here, you'll see left and right handles for all of the uh, grouped beams here. And basically what this does is you grab one of those handles and uh, drag it out to the right or to the left, and you can make these as short or as long as you want to. Um, wherever you need to do that and you can do that with the left one just like that and that's pretty much all there is to it that's basically how it functions we can um, press a delete or clear key and that will reset that side uh, the clear key will work as well let me just reset some extensions here we can also right click and when you right click one of these handles you will get the remove manual adjustments and when you do it from here it will actually reset both sides not just the side that you're resetting as you saw in that contextual menu there is options to unlink and relink, which means that beam extensions are link are unlinkable uh, options in Finale. So um, all the unlinking rules apply, including if you hold down the command key and extend it, this will turn orange in the score, meaning that uh, it will be left alone in the part, um, unlinking it in the process, and vice versa in the part. Holding down command will keep it linked to the score. By default, the uh, beam extensions will only occur on the primary beam. Now, with eighth notes, that is the only beam. But if I go into this measure where I have 16th and 30 seconds and try to extend this beam, you'll notice that it's only extending the primary eighth beam uh, in both directions for uh, this uh, run of 16th notes. There is a way to extend the 16th beams, and this is where we need to do something else. We can either double click this handle or press return or enter to get us to this beam extension selection. And you'll notice that by default, the eighth note uh, is selected only, but we can choose the eighth and the 16th. And when we click okay, now when we go ahead and extend these, we can extend both the eighth and the 16th beam uh, in either direction. Now, once you set this, it's gonna be the same for both the left and the right side. So it's not like you can set the left side different than the right. Um, you can't extend just the eighth on the left and then the eighth plus the 16th on the right. Unfortunately, you can't do that. It's it's um, uh, both or nothing uh, as far as this is concerned. And you can just press return again. And if you uncheck the 16th, it will uh, revert to just the eighth. We can actually just have the 16th extended if we want, and that will uh, flip around like that. And of course, uh, deleting will reset that one side. And when we delete the second one, you have to do both of them um, uh, in a row in order to do this. Now when we start to extend again, it reverts back to uh, just the eighth uh, extension. So um, resetting this will actually uh, revert it back to its um, uh, normal behavior, which is to only extend the primary eighth beam. Of course, the same thing can happen with 30 seconds. We can do some funky stuff where we're just extending the 8th and the 32nd if we want to get some something weird looking like that. Lots of options to deal with. Now, some funky things will happen with the, uh, the little beam stubs here when you have them. Obviously, without doing anything, it's only the 8th note that's going to get, or only the 8th beam that's going to get extended. But if you go in here and extend just the 16th note, then you can actually, you know, go ahead and make those beam stubs longer or really short if you want. Um, this is how you'd have to do it. You can flip it to the other side if you really want to. Of course, deleting will reset it. And some weird things will happen if you choose the 8th and the 16th in this particular uh, instance. Watch what, watch what happens. It kind of like, you see how it just kind of goes 8th and then the 8th goes away and then the 16th. So you can get some weird funky results when you have these, uh, these uh, uh, beam stubs. 
Now, I wanted to give you a couple practical examples. Um, here's a passage. This actually comes from a lesson that I was giving in Finale. Uh, oh, my God, it's almost a year ago at this point. Um, we were looking at a passage like this where the, the right and left hand of the piano just kind of alternates in 16th notes. And the way this was originally written was that um, these are just uh, four notes beamed as 16th notes without the rest and everything. So um, the challenge was trying to figure out how to do this. So um, this is where this tool comes into play. First thing I'm going to, oops, first thing I'm going to do is just hide the rests in both layers. Bear with me. All right, so now you have the rests hidden, but really what you want is these uh, 16th beams to connect all the way through, but Finale is not going to do that uh, automatically because there are rests there even though they're hidden. So this is where that beam extension tool is going to come into play, and you have to do this on both layers. And again, we only want to extend the 16th in this case. We don't want to extend the 8th beam. And once you have it set like that, you can go from the right to the left and just connect those beams, or you can go from the left to the right and connect those like that. So now we can get that notation the way we want. And of course, we'll do the same thing on layer two, just the 16th. Same thing over here. We'll do it from right to left, just the 16th. And that will give us our desired result, which is which was in the original sample I was trying to replicate. Um, all right, so that's kind of how you'd have to do that. You'd have to extend those little um, 16th beams to cover the, the whole span. There's another practical use for this. Uh, I did cover this plugin, the Patterson Beam Over Bar Lines plugin, which is really kind of neat. You can, uh, you know, beam these eighth notes all together using this plugin, Patterson plugins, beam over bar lines. There's a whole bunch of options in here, but just pressing go will give you a pretty simple situation. Now, this is not an extended beam. This is actually uh, another way that the plugin is tricking Finale into doing this. There's actually four extra eighth notes in this first measure, and then the first four here are hidden, and the whole thing is spaced out correctly. It's actually pretty complicated to do this manually. Um, but when it goes across systems like this, uh, the plugin does something different, and we can do it again, beam over uh, bar lines, press go. When it crosses a system, all it does is just extend those beams. Well, that's actually something we could do manually if you really wanted to with this beam extension tool. Just go in here, uh, make sure you're in the right layer. There you go. Extend that first beam a little to the right and extend this one a little to the left. And we basically have the same result that the uh, plugin gave us. Um, uh, so that's one way to do that uh, manually. It's another use for that beam extension. And then finally, there are some circumstances like this one right here. If I was to use the TG Tools Easy Tremolos plugin, you may be familiar with this. Sometimes you get these situations. If there's a lot of accidentals on the right side of the tremolo, they will cross into the, the tremolo markings here. Now, the plugin actually kind of tricks Finale into this situation, and these are actually beams right here. So um, the thing that we can do is we can use that beam extension tool to fix this, and this is exactly how we do this. And interestingly, what the plugin does out of the bat is that it actually sets this up correctly, the beam extension selection, so that it's 8th, 16th, and 32nd, so it will move all three of them at once, so you don't have to go in there and fix that. And then all you have to do is just you know, move these around so that the, uh, the, uh, the tremolo markings are not interfering with the accidentals. Incidentally, because these are beams, you can use any of the other beam tools uh, to make adjustments. So if we just use the beam angle tool, we can actually get this a little bit lower. We can change the whole angle of that beam. There's a lot of things that you can do with these little tremolo markings you may not even realize with these, uh, these special beam tools. All right, so that's uh, just another practical example of using the beam extension tool. The next tool I want to look at is the uh, secondary beam angle tool, which is this one right here. It looks like a sort of an eighth or sixteenth um, beam situation where the uh, the sixteenth beam is kind of angled here. And with this tool, obviously, if there's only um, notes with no beams or only one beam, clicking in the measure is not going to give you any results. But if you click in a measure that has um, you know secondary beams, you will get handles on the left and right side of every set of beams. And basically, the secondary beam angle tool works pretty much like the regular beam angle tool, except that it only works on the secondary beam. So um, with this first one, you can grab that left handle and the same thing. The left handle will uh, adjust the height. The right handle will adjust the angle. 
right? So this is this is exactly how we would do feathered beams in Finale. We can kind of set this up just like this. Um, of course, you could always use the arrows, by the way, the up and down arrows to sort of nudge these a little bit into place if you want. Um, so this is how you do feathered beams. And when you have more than one secondary beam, so 30 second notes have two secondary beams, you will get two set of handles. I don't know if you can see that, but they are there. So we can take this first one, for example, and just take that right handle and drag it down so that it matches with the eighth beam, maybe nudge it a little bit, and then do the same with the right one, maybe nudge it a little bit. And that will basically give you your feathered beams. To do it the other way, so this is a, a, a Di Celerando feathered beam. To do it the other way, you have to kind of set the heights first and then set the angle on the right side, set the height, and then set the angle on the 30 second beam. So now we get our Celerando feathered beam. All right, and uh, let's see, feathered uh, secondary beam angles. Uh, cannot be unlinked, so uh, right-clicking won't do anything. However, we can press delete and it will reset the whole secondary beam um, individually, just like that. We can reset them uh, by pressing delete or clear. Now there is another way to do these feathered beams. I covered it in the uh, the JW Change plugin, so maybe I'll put a link here to uh, send you that way. Um, there's a much easier way to, to do these feathered beams automatically, but if you just need to do one of them, you can just use the secondary uh, beam angle tool, and it's really pretty easy just to kind of drag that into place to get those uh, secondary uh, beams to feather out like that. All right, so that is what the secondary beam angle tool does. And then finally, the last beam tool to cover is the beam width tool, which is the second to last one here. Looks like a little beam and it has arrows pointing in up and down towards the beam. That's the beam width tool. And basically it does just that. It changes the width of the beam. And when you click in a measure that has a beam, of course, uh, if there are no beams in the measure, you won't get any handles. You will get two handles on either side, and both handles do the same exact thing. You just grab a handle and drag up or down to actually just change the width of the beam. So you can get a really, really thick beam, or if you're careful, you can get a really, really thin beam. Uh, maybe using the up and, ar up and down arrows to nudge um, can get you some really fine results there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically what it does. You can always press delete or clear to reset it back to normal. Uh, you can right click to remove the manual adjustments as well, just like that. Again, the left and right handles do the same exact thing. There's no difference between them. Um, you also see that this is an unlinkable property, so you can unlink this and it will turn orange and then uh, your super wide beam here will only appear in the score. And the usual uh, thing will happen, holding down command in the score will unlink and uh, change the thickness. Um, and in the part, if you hold down command, it will remain linked with the score. One thing to realize is that the beam width tool, if you do this where you have more than one beam, uh, 16th or 30 second notes, the beam width tool will actually apply to all of the beams at once. So uh, unfortunately you can't like press return to get to that window to, you know, um, Tell Finale, I only want to adjust the 16th, 16th beam or something. Um, it's kind of all or nothing with this. So you can see both the beams are getting thick here. If I go over here, the same thing happens. Both the beams are getting thin. Incidentally, it doesn't matter which way the beam uh, is faced. Up will always make it thinner. Down will always make it uh, thicker, whether or not you're um, on a lower beam or an upper beam. So um, up is thin, down is thick. Uh, as far as the beam thicknesses are concerned. And of course, just deleting will reset everything. All right, and so that is the beam width tool and we managed to do it. We covered the last beam tools, beam extension, secondary beam angle tool, and beam width tool, which means that we've only got two more tools in the special tools to cover the tie tool and the dot tool. I think I'll start with the tie tool next. Um, so we're getting close to wrapping up this series. Um, and yeah, so I hope this has helped the uh, with all these beam beaming tools and you can now adjust your beams to your heart's content. All right, so thanks for watching. Once again, my name is Jason. I really appreciate it. Uh, as always, please, please, please subscribe, and I will see you soon on the next video.